What is happening, everyone? Welcome back to Anchorage in the Storm. We are in part three, day two. And I want to thank you if you are new here for tuning in. Thank you for your interest. Welcome, welcome. We are here to praise God and walk in alignment and see what it really is that he has for us that we've been denying ourselves. And if you are a returning viewer, I want to say thank you. I love you. We are in this together. I hope it is feeding you as much as it is feeding me. And that is why you return. Amen. So we, um, just to go over everything, we, we do our daily devotion. We reflect on it, on what we need to do um, in relating to the subject. And then we go over Bible study um, from the NET version of the Bible because it's the most, um, uh, it's the best way that I can translate the word of God right now. Amen. And so we are going to get started today. We are, we are talking about why am I anxious? This is going to be good. I can already tell. Why am I anxious? So um, in the Holy Bible app, if you have the app, please go to Anchorage in the Storm, part three, day two, to follow. If not, just keep your Bibles on standby. But when we um, go into the Word at the Reflection today, we're going to go over Jeremiah 29, Timothy, 2 Timothy um, chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 13 and Psalm chapter 55. So it says, why am I anxious? Another important aspect of dealing with anxiety is recognizing the root cause of it. What is the source of your worry? What causes you to turn into a bundle of nerves at the smallest hint of a problem? While this varies from person to person, the biggest cause of anxiety for me was not being in control. What I mean by that is simply that I was not capable to control the sequence or outcome of a situation. When I felt like the situation was slipping out of control and was unfolding differently than I had envisioned, I started panicking. While I knew that worrying would not help the situation in any way, I still did it because my mind had been trained to fight, flight, or freeze instead of trust. Trust is a learned experience laced in faith. The Israelites, as we know, struggled all throughout their journey to the promised land. They worried. They complained. They grumbled. Was it because they lacked something? Absolutely not. God performed wondrous miracles in their midst every day thus taking care of all their needs and supernaturally providing for them. But because they chose to focus on their problems, worries, and compare their present reality to the positive aspects of their former lives in Egypt, their perspective was skewed. Instead of being grateful for the blessing of today, they were fearful about the uncertainty of tomorrow. They had to learn to trust in God's process and that his purpose was not to get them to the promised land mere physically, but mentally and spiritually as well. In the same way, learn to trust and lean on his process. Freedom from anxiety is at your fingertips and he is your ever present help in trouble. Amen. That is so good. That is so good. How many of us know that God is our ever help in trouble, ever present help in trouble. Amen. So for reflection today, we are going to take some time to put identity. I'm sorry, take some time to identify the reasons for our anxiety. It may be an unaddressed sin, a guilty conscience, feeling insufficient or insecure, a deep rooted and exaggerated fear, or as in my case, a sense of not being in control. If you are like me, I'll come, I'll soon come to realize that not being in control may just be a blessing in disguise. While it took immense effort and a lot of time for me to hand the reins back to God, it was the most rewarding and liberating experience because the burden was no longer mine. So let's dig deep into your memory banks for a time as a child where you experience anxiety and feelings of being overwhelmed. Now, in that scene, imagine Jesus walking in. How is he responding to your stress? 
In recent events, what caused you to worry? What has caused you to lose your peace? Even on this day, how was Jesus responding to your stress? Amen. So those are a lot of questions to unpack. For me, I want to say um, I did respond to uh, fear. I, I mean, I responded to losing my car uh, just a couple days ago. I responded in fear. I responded in panic mood. I responded in, um, like it says, a sense of not being in control. I responded as like, oh my goodness, what can I, what would I do? What can I do? Mind you, this happened on a Friday. Okay. So this happened this past Friday, a couple days ago. And all I could think was it's the weekend. I'm not even going to know what the damage is to get this car back until Monday. Until today. So I had a whole weekend full of like, no, 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 not the whole weekend because I, I, I actually gave in to maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Just like the text says a blessing in disguise because for my car to get taken, <laughs> and me trying so hard to juggle everything. I just had to realize like I'm beating myself up over something I cannot control. I'm panicking over something I can't control. Is there anybody that can relate to losing something out of your control? I have no control. So, um, good thing though, it was not repossessed because I'm on time on my car payments, but there's tickets on my car. Not this, it wasn't even... This is the kicker. Past cars, past tickets, just building on up. And I could say that allowing somebody else to drive my car pay, played a lot um, in it because there are tickets that I don't even know about as I'm going back in my head, as I'm opening mail. Old mail is like, oh my goodness, that's a ticket, that's a ticket, that's a ticket. So I want to encourage somebody today to open your mail. And I'm going to remind you in a separate video, open your mail today. And um, see all that is building up in your name. Amen. There are things building up in our name that we are we do not know about or unaware of because somebody else is doing that we allow. So it still fall back on us. Amen. So I'm not worried. It's out of my control. If it was, if I knew about each and every ticket, I probably would have acted faster. Um, so that's, that's, that's where I reflect and say that, Yes, I, I did have a bit of anxiety over some situations that are not my control. But when I look back on it, I say, I, all I can say is I tried my best. I had my gas, my rent, my water, my, did I say rent? Water, gas, rent, electric, kids, random uh, essentials that run out that we need, that got to get bought, shoes on our feet because we can't walk out barefoot, some things are just building up in your name that that is out of your control about how you go about handling it at times, especially when you are by yourself like me. Yes, I have my mom. I take care of my mom. Um, but it was times when even her, she we didn't I didn't even have income for her because of um how can I put this? When my grandma passed away, there was like this thing where her income was mixed in Oh, it was it your grandma die or did your mom die? Her name was uh written as the 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 deaf, and she could not receive her income because the the they said she was dead, and they mixed up her uh mom being a payee with uh her for I don't I cannot make this up but three years in a row that happened where I had no income at all from me or my mom. So it's just like, man, some stuff is really out of our control and we have to release it to God when it when it comes that way because we may say, oh, well, what about plan B? There is no plan B sometimes. Sometimes you just got to roll with the punches. So before I get, um, before I hold y'all to breakfast, <laughs> let me go over our Bible study today. If you can relate, just comment down below. We are in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know what plans I, what, for I know what have, pl I can't even read it. For I know what I have planned for you, says the Lord. I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I have plans to give you a future filled with hope. The devil don't want us to get this. I cannot even get it out. I'm going to read it again for the devil. For I know what I have 
plan for you, says the Lord. I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I have plans to give you a future filled with hope. And then in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 7, it says, For God did not give a give us a spirit of fear, but of a power. Look, don't want us to get it. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6 says, So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. What can men do to me? The last one, Psalm 55, uh, verse 22, it says, throw your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never allow the godly to upend it. Amen. So um, this is a word today and this is a word to keep us from being anxious. Amen. So I'm going to pray for us that we um, be anxious for nothing as we... Um, wrap up and head out to go start our day. Some of us are ending our day. Some of us are just at a standstill. Amen. We're just waiting on God to show us our next move. So Father God, we come into you, the likes of you, God. We want to bow before your presence, God. We want to ask that you come into our lives as we get ready to leave the house, as we get ready to lay down, as we get ready to just eat as we get ready to sleep, as we get ready to lay our clothes out, we are thankful for these things before us because of you, God. We ask today that you help us be anxious for nothing. We are in an uproar of anxiety today, God. We are worried about things that we cannot control. We are worried about things that are already written. We are worried about things that you told us, God, that you have it under control already to not be anxious, to not be weary in doing good. I ask that you touch on the lives today that are weary in doing well. I ask that you put a reminder in their head of how long they come. I ask you to show them their darkest moment, God, that they escaped from. I ask you to show them the moment where they thought they was not going to make it through. I ask that you flash that before the eyes of us today, Lord, because we didn't think we would make it through, but yet we are here still standing in the need of you. In Jesus' name, amen.